Molly Clevite. I'm here today to show you how to measure pistons to find out what the ring groove dimensions are. That's critical when you're selecting rings for a piston you've got to know what the groove dimensions are. So let's get at it. First thing I'm going to do is check a uh, compression ring groove and I'm going to do that. You've got to have some way to measure this thickness and so what I'm using is a, a handy little tool that you can pick up just about any auto parts store or tool supply. It's called a feeler gauge. And what I've done is I've selected some feeler gauge strips here. And what I'd like to get is to the point where my feeler gauge will just slip into this groove. Okay? I don't want to ruin the piston getting it in, but I don't want it real sloppy either. And you can see there I had to force it a little bit, but it just slipped into the groove. Then you can do uh, one of two things. You can either add up the three numbers that are on this feeler gauge, the three strips. That is 23, 22, that's 45, and 20 would be 65. <clears throat> or if they're worn off, you know, if your feeler gauge is old and they're worn off, you can do like I do and take a micrometer here, and you can put your micrometer in and measure the three pieces together like that. And then once you've done that, you can read your micrometer. In this case, it's the same thing, 065. Now, if you remember from our last video, I had measured this piston ring width, and the piston ring width was 062 and a half. That means it should fit in this groove easily. And if you see here, sure enough, it fits in that groove easily. <clears throat> now, the difference between the 062 and a half and the 065 is in our business what we refer to as side clearance. There always should be some side clearance on a compression ring. In this case here, it's about two and a half thousandths. Now, let me show you the oil ring. A little bit different deal here. What we're doing on the oil ring is we're going to measure the groove depth because that's also important. So I've taken my caliper and I've set it up here on the piston and I'm using it as a depth gauge to go in here and measure the depth of that oil ring groove. In this case here, when I check the caliper, I'm measuring 215, so 215 thousandths of an inch. Now I know in my case here that I'm running a 303-0186 oil ring, and when I look here in the book, the radial wall on that oil ring, now radial wall, if you recall from our last video, is the thickness of the ring measured this dimension. That radial wall on that oil ring is 201. Now I've got a 2015 groove, I've got a 201 ring. That means what? My ring is free to slide around in that groove, move back and forth. I don't have to worry about compressing it down to bore size and having it bottom out on the back of the piston. Now, I don't want to mislead you and make you think this is too easy. I picked the easiest one to measure because what happens here is my caliper won't fit in these 1 16th compression ring grooves, so it's not so easy to measure those. So what I have to do there is put the ring in that I've selected and make sure when I lay it in here that it is not out flush with the edges of the piston. You know, it needs to stick back in there a little bit. Now we could get more complicated and, and you know, measure this, but in most cases, if, if you stick your ring in here and it goes in beyond the edge of the piston a little bit, you're good to go. You don't have to get too upset about what that dimension actually is. The oil ring, like I say, is easy to measure. This is more just a visual inspection. Tune in again. Our next one, we're going to talk about how much is too much space behind these rings. We call that back clearance. So go to mollyaftermarket.com, make sure you've signed up for YouTube, and come visit us again when we talk about back clearance.